Hello, welcome back. I'd like to continue our discussion of describing functions and harmonic balance. And in particular, in this lecture, we would like to discuss um, about uh, discuss whether or not the limit cycles predicted by uh, finding the, uh, the condition of harmonic balance are stable or unstable. So we'll just begin with sort of a quick recap of where we are so far. Um, so what we've presented is this sort of hand wavy argument for predicting limit cycles. Um, and this is sort of roughly how it worked. We were interested in predicting a limit cycle and we distilled the essential properties of a limit cycle down into two numbers a and omega. And these were a, and this was the amplitude of the limit cycle, and omega is the frequency of the limit cycle. And we said, okay, well, what would this correspond to? And then, okay, again, roughly, maybe that means that we can find some signal y, which is equal to a sine omega t. And maybe this will be a solution to our feedback equations, and or roughly a solution to our feedback equations. And if that's the case, then maybe we've identified a limit cycle with amplitude a and frequency omega. And the way we proceeded was we decided to try and find this condition of harmonic balance. And the way that argument worked is we said, OK, we'll assume that y of t is this sinusoid with particular amplitude and frequency. Let's work out what e would be. OK, if this is a periodic signal, then E will also be periodic. And so it can be represented by its Fourier series. And then we said, OK, well, that's maybe a little bit tricky, but um, let's now suppose that G is a low pass transfer function. So it's filtering out high, high frequencies. And so it's just going to filter out all of the higher harmonics of this Fourier series, in which case we could just equivalently represent E by the first uh, components of the Fourier series. Um, and it's at this point that we introduced this thing called the describing function. And the describing function was keeping track of the first components of the Fourier series of E in a particular way. Uh, and in particular, um, we had that E of t was equal to um, the absolute value of the describing function n of a multiplied by a multiplied by sine of omega t plus the angle of n of a where this thing this was our describing function um, and then we trace this round through the feedback loop and said okay well this implies that y of t in steady state is going to be yeah, everything should be approximately equal here. Uh, well, if you input sinusoids in steady state, you get out sinusoids, and they just get scaled and um, shifted depending on the frequency response. So we get out n of a, a. So this is the amplitude of the sine wave that we put in. Gets scaled by the size of the frequency response at that frequency. And we also have here omega t plus angle n of a. So this was the sh phase shift that we put in. And then we get uh, the additional phase shift from our transfer function g. And then there's a minus sign in here because we've got um, negative feedback convention. So the input is minus e. So we said, right, OK, if we just keep track of the first components of our Fourier series, then if we start with a sinusoid, this is what we'd end up with and go, oh, that's also a sinusoid. What are the conditions for this sinusoid representation of y to be equal to this sinusoid representation of y, i.e. that we found a periodic solution to our feedback equations? Well, we just need the magnitudes and the phases to match. Um, and this was our condition of harmonic balance. And this was the criterion that g of omega is equal, g of j omega is equal to 1 over n of a. And then after that, we went on and we calculated the describing functions for a few uh, simple-ish uh, nonlinearities. So we did the relay uh, first of all, and we found that our describing function uh, in this case was equal to uh, 4h over um, pi a. 
And then we also did a slightly more involved example where we looked at the saturation. And here we found that the describing function was equal to 1 if a was less than 1. And then it was equal to this uh, monster expression here. Um, and then we had, I think, sine to the minus 1, 1 over a plus 1 over a square root 1 minus 1 over a squared. And this was our describing function in this case. So um, the, the objective is then to see if such a condition of harmonic balance exists. And then the final step is, OK, this predicts a limit cycle. What happens if we perturb ourselves slightly away from that limit cycle? Will we return to it, or will we wander off to infinity? So is the limit cycle going to be stable or unstable? So we're just going to finish things off by giving a graphical criterion for finding this uh, the point corresponding to harmonic balance, and then give a, like a stability check um, to determine whether or not we're predicting a stable or an unstable limit cycle. Um, and the method is going to be graphical. Uh, so what are the graphical ways we can represent these objects? Well, let's start with g of j omega. We've encountered lots of graphical ways to represent transfer functions in the past, Bode plots and uh, all that kind of thing. Uh, we're going to go with Nyquist plots um, again. So just like in uh, the circle criterion, here comes the Nyquist plot again. And if we use a Nyquist plot to represent a transfer function, what do we do? Well, we draw a picture of the complex plane. And then we take our transfer function and we just put in different values of omega and we get different points in the complex plane. So if we put in a value of omega is equal to 1, we might get this point here, uh, 0, say. So let's say this is g of j0. And then we put in a value of 1. And so this would be g of j1. And then we just find some more points. and. Preferably, we get a computer to do it. And we join all of these together. And this locus gives us the Nyquist uh, plot of the transfer function g. So it's just a plot of g of j omega for all of the different values of omega. And you typically go from omega 0 to omega's infinity. And you often end up at the origin, something like this. OK, so we have a graphical way to represent g of j omega. Is there an equivalent way to graphically represent the describing function? And the answer is yes, we can just plot this thing on the complex plane. And what should we plot it as a function of? Well, we should plot it as a function of a uh, this time. So the Nyquist plot is giving us a continuous curve that's a function of frequency. The describing function is also going to give us a continuous curve, but this time it's going to be a function of the amplitude. Um, and we shouldn't plot the Describing function, we should plot minus 1 over the describing function. And the right way to start thinking about this is this is like our minus 1 over k point. So when we were doing the circle criterion, we had lots of minus 1 over k points. and We were putting circles around them and all sorts of things. Now we're going to draw a locus of minus 1 over k points, where k this time is given by the describing function. So what would that look like? Um, Let's start with uh, the relay first. So what is minus 1 over uh, n of a? Uh, for the relay, this is just equal to minus 1 over 4h over pi a. Um, and the key thing to note here is that this is proportional to minus a. And now, just like with the Nyquist plot, we draw on this thing onto our picture of the complex plane for different values of a. And what do we get? Well, if we put in a is equal to 0, we get this point here. And then we see, as we make a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, we get something that gets more and more and more and more and more and more negative. So this is just minus 1 over n of a. So what is our condition of harmonic balance? Well, it's just the point where the Nyquist plot intersects the minus 1 over the describing function point. So that's this point here. And what are the amplitudes and frequencies of the corresponding um, limit cycle that you predict? Well, it's just the value of 
a star, so the value of a for which uh, we're at that point on our describing function curve, and the frequency corresponding to this value. So this is g of j omega star, this point here on the Nyquist plot, and this plot hit point here on our describing function plot. This is um, corresponds to 1 over n of a star with a minus, minus sign in front. And so this is our condition of harmonic balance, and this is how we would go about using this method to predict limit cycles. So we draw the Nyquist plot of our um, transfer function, we draw the 1 over minus 1 over the describing function plot for our describing function, and we see if they intersect, and if they do intersect, then we're predicting a limit cycle with amplitude a and frequency omega, or a star omega star here. Um, so how do we know if we're going to get something stable or not? Well, the key is to just imagine that the minus 1 over k, we're going to treat every point on this describing function curve like a minus 1 over k point, and we're going to check stability on one side of the intersection and on the other side of the intersection. So uh, what do we need to do here? Uh, I wrote something out that I would like to copy. So we want to check is the closed loop stable with a equal to zero um, and then here we're going to we're going to use the Nyquist criterion but with the minus 1 over k point corresponding to the minus 1 over uh, n of 0 point so in this example here let's just say g is stable so g is open loop stable we're going to look at the minus 1 over n of a point with a is equal to 0 and now we see we get an encirclement so we're encircling the minus 1 over n of 0 point. And so that means that if we have amplitude 0, our system will be unstable. And what does that correspond to? Well, that means that the amplitude in this feedback system is going to start to grow. So that's the first, um, uh, that's the first thing we're going to look at. And the second we're going to look at is, is the closed loop stable with a bigger than a star. So now we're talking about values of a out here. So we see on this curve, if our minus 1 over k point was over here, well now we're no longer getting any encirclements, and so by the Nyquist criterion we would be stable. So if we had this particular oscillatory solution, it would start to die out again. And so what happens is if we start in here, the oscillations start to grow, cut through, and then they start to decay. And this is the condition for checking or not whether we're going to predict a stable or an unstable limit cycle. So we, if this is false and this is true, then we're going to be precisely in this scenario of we start off with growing at, um, oscillations until they get just big enough uh, to correspond to our limit cycle, and if they get any bigger, then they'll be pulled back. Any smaller, they get pushed back up. And so, yeah, you don't have to look at a is equal to zero here. We could look at a is less than a star. And really, you should just check values of a on either side of the intersection, and then check stable or unstable. And if the smaller amplitude is unstable and the larger amplitude is stable, then you're predicting a stable limit, stable limit cycle. And so this is a, a kind of an overview of the method of harmonic balance and um, how to predict stable or unstable limit cycles.